Ophir's Helios Industrial Laser Power Meter is a compact instrument for measuring high-power lasers in factory environments, typically robotic laser cells. In this video, we'll see how to set it up and how to operate it. Just as with any tool used in precision manufacturing, the industrial laser needs to be monitored so that the laser process can be stable and predictable. The Helios is tailor-made for the production environment, with a robust body, motorized protective cover, and industrial interfaces, Profinet and RS-232. It measures industrial laser powers up to 12 kilowatts. All it needs is a short pulse exposure from as short as 300 milliseconds depending on the power. There's no need for water cooling. The footprint is therefore small and the process can be kept running with minimal interruption. A typical application of the Helios is to check the power of a laser welder in between welds. This measurement can be automated and optimized to minimize the interruption to the process. Here we see the Helios front panel. There are two Profinet power connectors, two Profinet RJ45 communications ports, and an RS-232 D9 connector. The two Profinet connectors are for daisy chaining, only one of each type, power and communication, is used for a single Helios unit. We'll now look at how to set up the Helios. There are three ways to interface with the Helios power meter. Profinet, RS-232 commands, for example with hyperterminal, and the included PC application. The setup of Helios depends on the mode of operation. The PC application is the easiest way to perform preliminary test measurements before integration into the factory network. It's also needed to upgrade the instrument firmware when relevant. We'll begin with the setup for Profinet. Place the Helios where it'll be convenient to measure the laser. You can bolt it down to the chassis with M6 screws. Connect 24 volts DC using a standard Profinet power cable. Using a standard Profinet RJ45 cable, connect the Helios to the Profinet PLC. You'll now integrate the device into the network. This is normally done by the network administrator, making use of the GSDML file on the CD that comes with the Helios. When the Profinet network is set up in the software, such as TIA, Step 7, the Helios device can then be found and integrated into it. The device addresses will then need to be manually entered, as shown in detail in the Helios user manual. After test measurements are done satisfactorily, the next step will be to integrate the power measurement into your facility software, controlled by the PLC, as fits your application and needs. Let's consider RS-232 setup. This will use the same Profinet power cable, but communication will be via a standard RS-232 D9 to D9 cable. Install the Helios control application by copying it from the included CD and following the installation wizard steps. After test measurements, you can integrate the power measurement into your software by scripting commands, again according to your application and needs. We'll now see how to operate the Helios. This is the initial screen. Upon startup, the program will check for a device connected with RS-232 to the COM port. If it doesn't find anything, it'll show this no device screen. Once the Helios device is properly connected, this screen will be shown. Use the range dropdown to set the appropriate range or scale. You'll want to operate in a range that's higher than the expected energy, but you want the energy to be at least 10% of the range's maximum value to maintain accuracy. Note that the range is in units of energy rather than power, since energy is what the Helios is actually physically measuring. Housing temperature is displayed here. Note that when the temperature exceeds the maximum recommended, 60 degrees Celsius, it will turn red as a warning. We now click on Options for more settings. Terminal enables the use of the Helios via RS-232 commands. The full set of commands is detailed in the user manual. Commands are entered after the dollar sign and are sent by clicking send. Messages are returned, when applicable, on the right side of this button. Open log file folder opens the directory in which the log files are generated. Note that the log file is found inside a folder named by the serial number of the Helios device used, located in the Helios installation directory. Note that there are three files created. 
a CSV file with a list of all the measurements taken, including power, energy, exposure time, current power, temperature. A similar CSV file, but showing the data only for the actual pulses. And a text file with a list of all the commands sent and received. The Helios has a protective cover that can be opened and closed remotely to protect the sensor when not in use. The cover is initially closed. After clicking open, the message in motion flashes until the cover is in a fully open position. After opening completely, the status changes to open and pressing the button now will close the cover. If some problem prevents the cover from completing its movement to open or close, this will time out and an error message will display to alert the user. Once the Helios is properly set up, we're ready to begin measuring. Preliminary test measurements are usually done most easily with the included PC application, since it can be used to measure with the Helios without any additional programming. First, check that the correct scale is selected. Open the cover. Check that the status is in fact ready. Fire a laser pulse. Pulse width between 0.3 and 4 seconds. The status will be shown as integrating until results appear. A few seconds after the pulse, results are shown. Power, time, energy. It's as simple as that. Some important considerations. Do not exceed these maximum specified values. 5 kilojoules total pulse energy. Examples might include 10 kilowatts for 0.5 seconds, 2 kilowatts for 2 seconds, 12 kilowatts average power. 4 second pulse duration or width. 4 kilojoules per square centimeter energy density, above which the sensor's absorber can be damaged. Wait at least 12 seconds between shots for maximum accuracy. Besides the single shot maximum specifications just mentioned, accumulated energy causes the Helios to heat up. If energy comes in faster than it can be dissipated back out, heat will build up and we'll need to give the Helios some time to cool back down. This typically takes about 10 to 20 seconds. Do not let the Helios temperature exceed 60 degrees Celsius. The PC application's temperature box will turn red to warn the user if this limit is exceeded. This is roughly equivalent to 30 kilojoules accumulated energy. For example, 10 pulses of 3 kilowatts at 1 second each. Recommended beam sizes and exposure times for various laser powers can be found in the datasheet. The datasheet, as well as software and firmware downloads, optional accessories and related data and documentation are all available on our website. Contact Ophir directly or via your local Ophir representative if you have any questions about how the Helios Industrial Laser Power Meter can help you in your application.